Well, good morning. In Matthew 6.24, the Lord makes it clear that you cannot serve two masters, that you will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Have you ever heard this saying before? There are two choices on the shelf, pleasing God or pleasing self. You can't serve both God and money. You can't serve both God and your career. You can't devote yourself to your plans and your will and then at the same time be devoted to God's will for your life. You can't serve both God and the world, both God and yourself, both God and whatever you want to fit into the blank. And what's interesting is it says that whichever one you're devoted to, the other you will despise. And I don't think a lot of people realize that today. Many people today, they're riding the fence. It's, in, it's including God in your schedule kind of Christianity. You know, claim Christ but not live for Christ. Use Christ for whatever benefit it may bring you in life, but not willing to pick up your cross, to deny yourself and follow him. Jesus asked us this question. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? None of us are a perfect servant, but do we have a servant's heart? Do we offer up our life as a living sacrifice saying, Lord, let your will be done. I don't want to just include you in my schedule, but you are my life and my love and my desire and my longing. Do you see the difference? What truly has our heart is what truly gets most of our time, energy, and devotion. A lot of times we spend most of our time worrying, doubting, fearing, but the Lord said that we should not worry about what we shall eat or drink or wear, but we must first seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto us as well. Sometimes we worry about tomorrow. We worry about what tomorrow will bring, but the Lord says that each day <clears throat> has enough trouble of its own and that we shouldn't worry about tomorrow, but we should embrace each day seeking his will for our life. Our heart should be given to God. Our treasure should be in heaven. We shouldn't be in the pursuit of worldly things because we are told not to love the things of this world, but to be those who do the will of God from our hearts, not seeking the praise of men, but seeking to please the Lord. I know how we overcomplicate things. And how many teachers and preachers today over-spiritualize themselves and act like they don't struggle. But at the end of the day, God is calling us to have childlike faith. This is where we simply trust Him. And we rely on Him for everything. We don't think, oh, I can do this on my own. You know, we don't try to go at it in our own strength. But we have a childlike faith, fully relying and fully depending on the Lord. Where we love Him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Where we don't judge others and despise others. But we divide the truth with God's Word. And we speak the truth in God's love. We don't condemn others. But we tell them where their sin is will lead them. We preach the gospel. We preach the gospel. And did I mention, we preach the gospel. We're sometimes we're so busy over-criticizing and analyzing and condemning and judging when it's obvious that person hasn't found Christ. And what are we neglecting? To have faith and to preach the gospel. We forget that we too were once dead in our sins, lost in darkness. We need our hearts to be clothed in humility. We need to put on hearts of compassion. 
It's not hard to tell who has a heart after God. And it's not hard to tell who's faking it. People give lip, lip service to God, but their heart is far from Him. They play church, but they don't live for God. They include God in their schedule, but they don't build their life upon His Word. There are many ravenous wolves who clothe, them, who clothe themselves as a believer, but inside they have their own agenda, their own vision, and their own direction. They're not in the pursuit of Christ. They're not in the pursuit of holiness. They're, they're looking to win people after themselves, doing it in the name of Christ. But a heart that is set on fire for the Lord should be preaching the gospel, looking to win people to Christ, not to themselves. We know the world in which we live in. We know how hard it is for us at times to keep our eyes on Christ. That's why we must keep our eyes in His Word. We know how easy it is for our hearts to stray away. That's why we must be always falling at the feet of Christ, confessing and forsaking our sin. We need that cleansing daily. Our Heavenly Father knows what we need before we ask Him. We are told to ask, to seek, to knock. We are told to be in that continue, continual pursuit after the heart of God, His will for our life, His kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. But we get so caught up in the mundane. We settle for less. God is able to do more than than all that we ask, even more than we can imagine, and yet we have such little faith. And sometimes how small our strength, how forgetful we are. But in reality, it's simple. Surrender everything. Surrender our expectations, our desires, our plans, and say, Lord, I trust you, and you know what's best for me in my life. For me personally, and I know for you too, you want to get closer to the Lord in your relationship to Him. We must first seek His kingdom and His righteousness. We must be willing to pick up our cross, to deny ourselves and follow Him. We must be diligent to seek after Him with our whole heart going to Him in prayer, devoting ourselves to learning the truth of His Word. We can't serve two masters. We can't serve ourselves and just leave a little room for God. We need to quit fooling ourselves. We can't mess around with all the lures and pleasures of this world and think that God will be pleased or to think that even a little bit of sin won't bring destruction in our life. We must devote ourselves to Christ, or we need to quit calling Him Lord. We need to follow where He leads, asking Him to help us, because we can't do this on our own. Soon, our life will come to an end, and it's probably sooner than we think. But if we were wise, we will begin to live out that reality in our hearts, knowing our life is fleeting, knowing apart from Christ we can do nothing, knowing that we shouldn't be arrogant because the Lord opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. What if today was it for you, for me? So whatever time we have left, let us pour out our lives for the glory of Christ, that we would simply be a willing and empty vessel, that we would empty ourselves of ourself so that God could fill us and then we could pour ourselves out once again for his purpose and for his people. That our life would be a pleasing aroma offered up to the Lord in worship to him. That our life would be lived according to his will, not squandered away, not wasted, not consumed with worry and fear or crippled by guilt and shame. 
Let's not dwell on all those things that we can't change. But as a child who trusts their Father, let's trust our Heavenly Father and seek Him out with our entire life, our whole heart, our complete devotion. Jesus says, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Isaiah, his mind is kept in perfect peace who trust in the Lord. Philippians, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Let God's word take deep root within your heart and begin to live it out in your life. Cast your cares unto the Lord because he cares for you. And do not harden your heart if you hear his voice, but follow where he leads and trust in his plan for your life. Oh, my friends, don't be deceived. The road is narrow and difficult is the way. Jesus says that in this world we will have trouble, but to take heart for he has overcome the world because the one living in you is greater than the one living in the world. So don't lose faith, but have courage and be bold and live for Christ as if it was your last day. Because one day it will be. Don't be afraid to be kind. Don't be afraid to be mistreated. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Don't be afraid to love, to stand for what you believe in. Don't be afraid to share the gospel. Don't be afraid to trust in God with all your heart when you don't understand. Don't be afraid. Let his will be done. May he increase and we decrease. May he become more and we become less. Don't be afraid, but walk in the spirit. Deny the flesh. And I, I pray that we realize how desperate we need Christ to strengthen us. How important it is to surrender. How important it is to lift our worship and praise and be thankful and be content. How important it is to humble ourselves and ask the Lord to do a work in our hearts, in our life, in the life of our children, in the life of our family, that we pray for the lost and that we don't give up. Be content. Be grateful. Don't grumble. But praise God for his sacrifice, that he died for you upon the cross, that he loved you even at your worst, and that he loves you today, that you are a work in progress, and God ain't going to give up on you. But he's going to complete the work that he started in you because he is faithful and he is able so let's have some faith today we don't know what tomorrow holds but today we surrender and we say lord here i am your servant is ready your servant is willing and lord we need you to guide us to empower us to strengthen us to do a work in our hearts and Lord, we just want to bring you glory with the way that we live our life. So don't be afraid today. Don't be afraid, but live for Christ. Be bold. Take heart. Have courage. Be firm in the faith. Be blessed today. Be a blessing. Tell others about Christ. Amen.